Hey guys, so now that we have seen different ways that we can calculate work in different situations, let's talk about how to calculate the total work on an object, which is also called the net work of an object or on an object. So the net or total work done on an object is simply the addition of all the works done to the object or on the objects. In other words, the work done by all forces that act on the objects. Okay, so work net our net work is simply the sum of all works. So if you have an object and there's three forces, let's say, acting on it, there are three forces acting on the object, and they all do work on the object, you'd have something like this, work one plus work two plus work three. And if you can find all these numbers or you have all these numbers, you just add them up. And if you had more, obviously, you would just keep adding this, okay? But there's another way. Sometimes you're not gonna know all the forces or you're not gonna know all the works, but you will know the net force. Remember the net force is the sum of all forces. This is a vector addition. So instead of knowing a bunch of the forces, maybe you just know the net force and that works as well. Remember work is F D cosine of theta. So the work done by the net force is the net work, okay? So I can do that. Instead, I can just find the net force and multiply it by d cosine of theta. Theta is still the angle between your displacement and your net force. Okay, so depending on what you have, you're going to use one or the other. One point here that's important to make is that uh, work and energy are scalars. They're not vectors. They don't have direction. So unlike forces, where we would treat X and Y forces separately because they are vectors, with work, we combine X and Y to form network. Let me give an example real quick. If you had a force three going this way and a force four going this way, the net force is not seven, three plus four is seven, but instead it's a five because it's a vector. Now, if a force going this way does a work of, uh, let's say 10, and a force going this way gives you a total work of 20, then the network is going to be 30. Notice I didn't draw an arrow because um, work is not a vector, right? When I drew work here is the work done by this force here, okay? So you just add the numbers because they're scalars. So let's try this out. Here's an example. You pull this box for a, uh, with a constant force for a distance of five, meters up the plane so sort of five meters this way uh, smooth so there's no friction and the magnitude of the work done by each force is shown below so this is the arrow indicates the force not the work work doesn't have direction but I'm telling you that the work done by normal zero the work done by F is 75 and the work done by MG is 60 this is the magnitude of the works okay and I want to know what is the net work done to each so there's two ways you can calculate net work. You can add up all the individual works or you can find the net force. Here I'm given the works, so that's what I'm supposed to do. So net work or work net is going to be the sum of all the works, which is all these guys added together. The only thing you have to be careful here is that I'm giving you the magnitude, meaning I'm giving you these works as positives and some of them might be negative. And here you have to remember when is a work positive, when is, when is a force do positive work, and when is a force do negative work. Positive work is in the direction of motion, and negative work is against motion. This guy here is zero because it's perpendicular to motion, and so you should remember that the work done by normal is always zero because it's always perpendicular to motion. This guy goes in the direction of motion, so it's plus 75, and mg is going against motion because if you remember, MGAY is perpendicular, so it doesn't do anything. So the work done by MG is the same as the work done by MGX against motion. Another thing, another way you could remember this is that you are effectively going up, even though you're going at an incline, you're still going up. So when you go up, gravity does negative work against you. Okay? So when you combine these, it's not 75 plus 60, but it's 75 plus negative 60 or 75 minus 60, and the answer is 15 joules. So you do have to realize that this number is a negative. Very important. Okay. And then I'm asking for the net force acting on the box. How do you find net force? Well, 
sort of the straightforward way to find net force is to use this equation, the sum of all forces. But I don't know any forces, right? So I'm kind of stuck here and I have really no way of doing this. I don't even know the mass of this box, so I couldn't even begin to calculate it. So another way that you can find net force, now that we've introduced this other equations, is by using this right here, right? If you know work net and d cosine of theta, you can find f net, okay? So that's just being able to play with the equations. So work net, which I now know is 15, is f net d, the distance is 5, cosine of theta. So this is 15, 5, cosine of theta. Remember when you're trying to figure out the angle there, you got to slow down a little bit, be careful. Theta is the angle between F net and D. What is the direction of the net force here? Well, you should know that the two forces that are sort of competing here are these, this uh, F here that pulls you up and MGX. And I know that F has to be greater than MGX because this box is moving up, okay? It's moving up. So I know that the direction of the net force has to be um, going up this way, all right? So because of that, I know that this angle here must be zero. If the net force is up and my delta x is up, then this angle is zero, all right? So we can now calculate our net force right here. Um, by the way, another way that you know that this thing is going up is the fact that the work going up is greater than the work going down. So you know that more energy is being pumped into moving this thing up than it is being pumped into moving this thing down. So because the energy is greater going up, this thing will end up going up. Um, and therefore, I can confidently say that these are in the same direction, which means the angle I'm supposed to put there is zero. The cosine of zero is one, so I end up with F net being 15 over five, which is simply three newtons. Okay, that's the net force acting on this uh, object. All right, so I wanna make another quick point here and then I wanna give you guys a practice problem to work on. To find the network, um, there are two ways. One of them is if you have the net force, that's great. Uh, but usually you're going to need to first identify all the forces, whether it's because you are going to identify all the forces so you can find all the little works and add them up, or because you're going to identify all the forces so you can calculate the net force, however you want to do it, okay? But the point is that to find net work, you first have to identify forces. And the, the big idea here is that not all the forces do work. So I like to draw this little diagram here that a force may cause a work, or a force, a force may do work. This means two things. One, you cannot have work without a force. So if there are five forces acting on an object, there might be five works done to the object, but either five or less, because some forces don't, okay? Some forces don't do work. Work is FD cosine of theta. So right away you see how you need to have a force in order to have work. But remember also that if a force is perpendicular, it does no work. The work done by perpendicular forces is zero. So identify all the forces and then figure out which ones do work, calculate and add it together, okay? I want you to try this practice problem here and then we're gonna keep going. So let's give this a shot. 